been a while since we've been here on the Homestead Channel. A lot has been going on in the Epic Gardening side of things. We have 13 people on the team now, and not a one is out here in the backyard helping me with the chores that I'm doing today, which feels really good. I can't tell you how good it feels to be in the sun right now and just letting it hit me. Today's episode, I'm just gonna get as much done as I can humanly do until the sun goes down, take you through some garden chores here at the homestead, let's go. The first thing that has happened is of course the coop, but that's for another time. We did have to take down this massive Chinese elm, which you can see some remnants of there. So my task right now is to break up the logs from the twigs and the leaves, separate them, we'll throw some firewood over there, and all this eventually will go through the chipper shredder. Okay, task one is done. We have a little pile of firewood. We have a big pile of brush that's gotta go through the chipper shredder. It was kinda of sad to take the Chinese elm down, but it's not native and it's not productive and it was in the way of our chicken coop. Sneak peek, something coming on the main channel soon. So we're gonna reuse all of it. We'll either use it for firewood, we'll use these logs to line the interior of the chicken coop for a little style, a little border. And then the big stuff is gonna get chopped down and turned into mulch. So we're on to the next task. Next up today in the front yard, you guys haven't seen this in a while, but the new beds are actually in. So this is the Urban Round Tall. This is the Urban Tall 9-in-1. And then over here, we've got the Urban Short Round right there, Court and Steel. And then we have the Urban 9-in-1. But that's not what we're talking about today. We are talking about the beds that need to get changed. So this broccoli here has flowered uh, quite a bit, as you can see. And honestly, the bees are loving it, but it's time to get this out. We'll get this composted down. And actually what you'll notice is, you can see there's been a significant amount of soil drop. And usually when you see that, especially if you filled it up a couple times, you know you're probably dealing with some sort of grub situation that's eating a lot of this matter and uh, bringing it down. So we'll see if we get any of those, but right now we gotta get these out of the way. So today I'm rocking the Felco 2s, which is probably the most classic pruner of all time. I'm just going to come in right down here at the base, give it that nice chop, and there you go. We got a broccoli down. So you can either just chop it like that, but these are pretty, you know, that's pretty thick stem right there, guys. So what I'm going to do is actually chop out a little bit more of it than you normally would because I got to refill this bed anyways. So let's go ahead and get that done. Broccoli's out, snow shovel's in. A lot of people ask me, yo, Kev, why do you have a snow shovel? You live in San Diego. It's because a snow shovel, weirdly, makes really good work, really short work, of a big old soil pile. So this stuff is from San Pasquale Valley Soils. This is their sort of raised bed mix. We've tested out almost every single one in San Diego. Hopefully this one is our favorite. We haven't quite found something we love, which means we might end up making our own soil mix. You never know what we do here at Epic Gardening. But I gotta fill this up, throw it in that broccoli bed. Well, it turns out I was right about this bed. I told you guys, when you see that settling happen, Usually that means that your worst nightmare is here. I don't even want to touch these guys, but I will just for the sake of this video. Actually, I'm gonna take them out. I really hate these guys. These are those little grubs. These are the big old, they're not little, they're actually huge. It's hard to see, but I'll toss one in the air. You can kind of get the heft of it. You really don't want those in the soil because they're gonna start eating your roots up. So I'm gonna do a quick filtration for them. And then what I'll do is I'll fill in the rest of this, top it all the way up. And if you'll notice right here, this little pipe, we have irrigation fully set up here at the homestead. 14, 15 different zones, including one zone for all these raised beds, which I'll show you how to plumb up a sick irrigation system. But right now, I just need to remove some of these big old root clumps here that I don't want interfering with my future crop. So these guys come out, at least for me, when I'm doing a bed flip like this, I don't think it's too much of a sacrilege to do that and just shake that root away. So I'll do that with the rest of these. And also helps me try to find some of those grubs that I was just telling you guys about. I'll tell you, they are really gross. I can't wait till I have chickens so I can actually feed them, but I've even been told that chickens don't like them. So, sort of a, a nemesis that has no solution, it feels like. I've heard that uh, milky spore, beneficial nematodes can help them quite a bit. I guess we're gonna have to see if that works for us this season. So all the major root clumps are out. Now I'm just taking stuff from here, shoveling it in. And I'm not gonna do a lot of amending here. There's a decent amount of compost in here. I'll just make sure to give it a thorough wet down when I'm done. All right, we're full up. I'm just gonna give it a little water here. Don't really have to do much. I mean, I'm just prepping this for the next reset. Pretty soon, we're gonna be doing a video on the main channel about the seeds we're excited to grow, both Jock and myself, as well as Chris, who's a new addition to the squad, the Epic Gardening crew. She's up in Vancouver, British Columbia. So she's gonna give you guys who are in a little bit colder climate and 8B some suggestions that might work for you this spring. And I'm done, I'm on to the next task. 
Next up, we have some cauliflower. I'm actually gonna give this one to my mom here. This one is Snowball, pretty classic variety. It's actually starting to green just slightly. You can see right on these edges here, hard to see in the light, but it is slightly greening out. So what I wanna do, come in with the Felcos, we'll come in really low, give it that chop right at the base. Oh, I just saw a cabbage moth coming through, trying to get it. Take a look at that. If that is not a pristine cauliflower, my friends, I don't know what is. I had to take a quick break because it's 82 degrees in February, which is not a good feeling. But what is a good feeling is the grapefruit that's in the front yard. This is the tree that was there when I moved in. I'll show you a little cross section. I don't know the variety, but what I do know is it's ripe and ready right now. Take a look at that. The pith, a little bit thick, but here's the real magic. Guess what's working? The outdoor sink. So if I want to, I can wash my hands. I can rinse off my produce. Grapefruit for some reason is a little dirty. And then I can take a taste. Now, it's not really fully set up. The plumbing down below is just a bucket. Uh, it may end up being some sort of larger basin pretty soon, but that's fine for me right now. I'll just drain that out. You really can't turn uh, sink water, regulations wise, into gray water, but I'm going to do it anyways. I'm just gonna dump it from the bucket into wherever in the garden that makes the most sense. So let's give this a little taste test here. With grapefruit, Wow, it's the juiciest thing I've ever eaten. If you miss the harvest window, it is so acidic and so sour. But if you let it sweeten just slightly, then you get a flavor that's more like this. So I'm gonna finish this and I'm back on to my next task. Well, it's that time of day, my friends. The crows are here. The audio might be a little crazy on today's show. I'll tell you, this is not even close to as many as you'll usually see show up here. So here you can see the grapefruit. That's where we just ate from. Absolutely delicious, fruiting like crazy, ripening up. Now, when we take a look at the rest of the orchard, you really wanna make sure that you're not making any pruning mistakes. So here we have a donut peach. This one, it's budding right now. If I was to prune it right now, that'd be disastrous. Same as this one over here, another peach. I believe we got a nectarine right here. This one's growing a little lopsided, but I think I can manage it because this is south facing right this way. So this should want to start to bend backwards and equalize itself. And then this growth getting more sun earlier in the day should want to sprout up a little bit sooner. So I'm gonna let that be. I'm not gonna prune it too much. Over here is my apple. You can see the way we planted it was to kind of force these buds and these branches to kind of come over this way towards the south. So again, pretty compact, not a lot to do here. I think I'm just gonna let that be. Pomegranate kind of weird. So you think, oh, oh no, I killed my pomegranate. Well, no, you didn't because this is a deciduous and it's gonna drop in the winter. And of course, as we get into late winter, early spring, that's coming right back. Now, when we get over to the citrus, it becomes a different equation. So let's take a look. We've got our yuzu right here. It's kind of hard to see, but good shape, good structure, gonna leave it. Now this guy, this guy's going wild, isn't it? So these vertical shoots are just really taking off. And I think shape-wise, I do wanna bring that down a little bit. So what I can do is I can come in, just make some pruning cuts, just like that, bringing it down slightly. I'm not too concerned about damaging it for any potential fruiting issues. I really am more concerned about shape in this first season or two. So I'm gonna come down and take a lot of these off, especially ones that have been absolutely decimated by leaf miners. Just cut those down. And you can see an example of what that ends up looking like afterwards right here. So here I've done that already. You can see this cut that I made a while back. And look, new growth is coming out perfectly fine. You're not gonna kill the plant and it's gonna look really good. So I'm gonna do a quick pass down here do the rest of this citrus and I'll be right back. So you can see I took off a decent chunk of growth here and I have to say I am slightly nervous about the choice but because I decided to plant this citrus so close together I just have to make some unique choices. Like right here I took off a huge chunk on this guy right here which I believe is my Moro blood orange, probably. Nope, that is my car car and navel. So that one's not really producing too much yet. There was this huge random one just coming up off this way. It was really throwing the whole thing off. And you can see some of these out here where the gray water didn't end up reaching, still producing. Kumquats, not quite ready yet. This Washington navel has really been kind of the laggard here. And it won't be anymore because as you can see, we have irrigation set up. I will of course eventually do a full breakdown on how my irrigation system works, but I have to say already, I am absolutely pleased. So zone three, let's run it for, let's just do 30 seconds because I've already watered it today. So zero, three, zero, orchards on zone three, I'll hit okay. And let me run you over there. Say hello to the epic mom, everyone. 
she's hanging out. So take a look. We plumb this up and you got the bubblers coming up, popping water out right at that root zone. At least for now, that's gonna be our solution on every single tree. I know I have gray water on this, but the way you solve that is by modulating the flow rate of this. So if this is getting more water because the gray water's right here, and that's not, you put a higher flow rate over there and a lower flow rate over here. If you're wondering what was going on here, well, we rigged up a DIY semi-shade cloth. So this is green shade cloth. I believe it's 50 or 70% shade. And we've put it under San Juan Cabbage Strano Junior. This is the baby giant cabbage that I'm going to grow this year for my failures last year. But what this is, is this is just three quarter inch electrical conduit using these little connectors from a company called Maker Pipe. So we're actually prototyping this. We're gonna see if we can come up with some really powerful kits that fit in these round beds, in the rest of the beds in the garden, or really just in the ground if you don't even have a raised bed like this. So there's actually quite a bit more to do, but I do wanna give you a little quick tour of what's going on here at the homestead. I know it's been a while, like I said, on this channel. So I'm gonna show you what's going on with these cabbage, the patch over here, which is Totally unkempt, but actually not if you take a quick look. And of course, the Epic Pond. When it comes to the back garden, I think I'm probably the most proud of these cabbages as I've been of any cabbage. I mean, look at this guy right here. That is one of the more pristine looking cabbages. Even though, yes, we did still get hit by that looper, we're finally getting a nice tight cabbage head there, which I'm very pleased about. This leek crop here, I mean, look at this guy. Quite thick. I'm probably gonna have to start healing this up to get that nice white leek base that we're looking for. And then over there, the garlic is absolutely killing it. But I know you guys are probably just here for what's going on over here with the pond and our bread factory. So here is our spring wheat crop that we made a lot of improvements on. So we actually planted it a little bit more densely. We actually buried the seed and we've been saturating it quite a bit. So this is looking very, very healthy. I am so excited this spring to get a nice crop. And in between, we've planted both cover crops. So you can see cover crop kind of going crazy in this backyard over here. But also, if you look really closely, we've got potatoes. I took all my old potatoes and just planted them right here in the ground. We'll see how they do. It's quite hard ground, but potatoes are kind of known for breaking up that hard ground. And then of course, my friends, the epic pond. We have done a little bit more pondscaping, not too much more, but you can see all the plants are really happy in here. We've had some algal blooms, not a big deal. We're even seeing some propagation on these floating guys right here, as well as a little bit of duckweed over there has been propagating itself as well. The koi are in here, but they come out late at night, so you can't really see them right now. I'll see if I can get a clip for later on next episode. But man, the pond is looking really good. I got a weed around this whole area here. Watercress is looking good, and I'm just excited. So, while well, I hit a couple more chores here before sunset, thanks for tuning in, I know it's been a while. I'm gonna have more videos coming out. Jacques and I, as well as Chris over on the main channel, the new addition to Epic Gardening, maybe even more this season, we're trying to get people in different growing zones to show different methods, different ranges of budget, different techniques, different climates. So stay tuned guys, good luck in the garden, keep on growing, and pretty soon there's gonna be chickens in that coop.